My wife came to me with the most absolute strangest request. After almost a decade being together, she now wants to open up our marriage so we can openly date and be with other people. And when I tell you the reason behind her sudden change, you're going to lose your mind. Let's jump into it now. My wife has been honest with me about wanting an open marriage. What should I do? I'm not sure whether to feel insulted or respected by what my wife of three years has suggested. Most people would not even bother asking, they would just cheat. However, I was not expecting this and what it meant for us. She claims that it's coming from a selfless position and she's doing what she's doing for us. See, she first got this idea after watching a movie and she's sure that it's going to work. However, I'm left wondering if I'm enough for her after eight years of being together. Now she wants permission to step out of our marriage so that she can pursue her boss and get a promotion. Ugh. She says that she had a conversation with Barry and he told her that while he was not opposed to the idea, he needed her husband to know about it first. When I first met him, I thought he was the most committed husband who could put, well, all the other men to shame. His wife is beautiful, I can't deny it. So I wonder why he would want to be with somebody else, anybody else, and why she would even allow it. I mean, I've heard about open marriages before, but have not really thought much about them. But after the bombshell my wife dropped on me, I think that I need to get more information out of them. The conversation came about last night after dinner. She nervously told me that she had something she wanted to discuss. She first told me how she loved and respected me, but there was a reason why she hadn't thought of it. She didn't want to disrespect me by going behind my back, so she just wanted to ask for permission. She told me that she had a way that we could get money, the money that we needed to pay our deposit for the house that we wanted to buy. I asked her what it was, and she said that there is a way that she could secure a big bonus from her boss. She wanted me to give her permission to sleep with him, <laughs> and he would give her the bonus. I was taken back by her words and thought that I was dreaming. When I asked her if she was joking, or maybe she's lost her mind, she assured me that all was well upstairs, and she told me that she was tired of us struggling financially. She knew her boss was attracted to her, and she wanted to leverage it. She admitted that something nearly happened, but... He stopped her and told her to ask for permission. What a peculiar way to cheat, is what I thought. I asked why he wanted to ask for permission when he could have just done it without letting me know right then and there. She was ashamed and said that she might have claimed that we were open to his wife so that, well, she could get closer to her. It was like I was looking at a stranger as she let me know all these things that she's been keeping from me behind my back. I did not know whether to be thankful or to leave her sitting there stunned. She then said that maybe it could be something for us to explore. Something that might end up being healthier for our relationship. She tried to sell me on how I could also sleep with anybody that I wanted to and have no consequences. She also kept on telling me that she wanted to do it for us. She had gotten the idea firstly from a movie and now from her boss. I started to wonder what sort of workplace it was where people could discuss such things openly. No offense to anybody who's open or poly, but I believe in monogamy. I've never thought of stepping out. Yes, I found other women attractive, of course, but that's just on the outside. None of them have a heart of gold and quirkiness such as my dear lovely wife. Well. She's simply the one for me, and I've never thought of cheating on her. Yet, here she was, suggesting that we cheat on each other and be open about it. Ugh. I've almost, well, honestly been given it some thought despite my spouse. I've also done some research as I've been writing this. There are some articles supporting it and some that are against it. I've also spoken to my best friend this morning when we were at the gym. Jackson. Jackson said that he would never do it. He loves his fiance and would never want anyone else to be with her. Ew. But then my other friend Lisa said that maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea. 
She said that after eight years of being together and being each other's first, we've not really had the chance to experience other people. She feels it will strengthen our relationship and affection for each other as long as we stick to the ground rules. This is another thing. It appears that most of them have rules so that things don't go sideways. Not that I'm going to do it, guys, but let us say that if I did, I wonder what rules I would have to put in place. Then on the other hand, there's this bonus that she wants to get for us. Her actions are driven by wanting to get better lives for the two of us. We've been saving up for a house for the longest time ever, and right when we're about to pay our deposit, something happens, or the house is snatched from us. We currently live in a one-bedroom apartment. It has all the amenities that we need, but it's far from both of our workplaces, and it's cramped. Both of us make a decent amount of money, but we've decided to be a bit frugal with our finances till we can get our dream home. Maybe I should let her do it, as long as she does not get involved in her emotions and she's sure that she's going to get the money. What do ethics have to do with anything when people are all just doing all they can to advance these days? Some people advance because of nepotism. Maybe it's not so bad to do it so that we can advance. At least she's been honest with me, right? I mean, come on. Now that my shock has lessened, I think that I'll talk to her about this. I'm on the fence about it and what it'll actually mean for us. How will she also be able to handle the fact that I'm with other women, assuming that I can even get any? Let us be honest, I've not been in the game for years. I know that everything's changed. My sister, who's 21, is always telling me about what she goes through in the dating scene, and while I will not be dating, per se, it should be something that I have to consider. I admit that I'm also a bit insecure about myself. I once read a post about a man who suggested an open marriage to his wife and then the wife got more dates. What if we try it and then she falls for her boss? Wait, I've not asked her if it's only her boss that she wants to be with. This is so confusing, to be honest. I love her so much and would do anything for her. I've done everything for her in the past. I turned down my chance at my dream college to be close to her. She has also done a lot for us. She was able to support us when she was the first one to get a job after college. Our relationship is very open and we do not have secrets. She's the type to tell me if somebody's hitting on her and we make a joke about it. Clearly, we've been doing something right if she can respect me enough to tell me that she might want to sleep with her boss. My mind's scrambling right now and I really need some help making a choice. I don't want to do the wrong thing and lose her. What if I say no and she still goes with it? What if I say yes and I lose her? Either way, we're going to talk more about this later. Right now, I have to get back to work. This is the only thing that's been on my mind since last night. I've not even properly slept thinking of this. Guess I should have also taken a coffee break so that this day can go faster. Update number one, two weeks later. I decided to say yes to it. I decided that it could be an experience for us and could bring us closer, but there were rules that we needed to put into place. Emmy and I spent a lot of time discussing this and deciding what we could do and could not do. We decided that we would not tell our family about it. I know my parents would blow a fuse. They're old fashioned like that and we've also decided that friends are off limits as that can lead to a messy situation. We also agreed to be honest with each other about when we would not be coming back home. This led to the most important rule, we do not bring people home. At the moment, she only has her boss and promises that she'll tell me if there's any updates. She confessed that while she did want the money, there was also something thrilling that she found about it. I guess that we'll see how thrilling it is once I find someone but before all that started, I wanted to meet him. I wanted to sit down, have a meal with him, and assess his personality. He's an okay-looking, funny guy, and no, I'm not worried about him stealing my wife's heart. His wife knows about the arrangement and is okay with it. He says that they've been doing this for 10 years, and it's basically saved their marriage. So, I'm the only one who's left, well, looking for a partner. 
Lucky for me, I live in a big town where everybody minds their own business, so the only person I was allowed to tell was going to go out with me on the weekend, and I will try my luck. Since my best friend Jackson used to date a lot before he got engaged, he believes that he can make sure that I meet someone. Guys, I admit I'm nervous. What if I say something wrong? What if I hate it and want it to stop? Will my wife be able to stop, or will she get angry with me? But on the other hand, I'm excited, and I got this pass. Who knows? It could be an experience, and I might like it. Update number two. I found someone in the least expected of places and in the weirdest of ways, and I don't want to see her again. But I'm so intrigued. It's wrong, very, very wrong, but it feels so right. I also never expected her of all people to be into this. This could cost me all that I've had, and yet I find that I don't care. Wow, I get what my wife meant now. There's an unexpected thrill, and when me and my friend went out, it was great, but I was too nervous to make a move on anyone. I got a lot of attention to my surprise, but no one caught my eye. While I was outside with my friend, we ended up discussing the whole open marriage thing. He told me to give it another week, and that week was hell, and I regretted why I even told Emmy that it was okay for us to open up our marriage. She came back home late every day, and she seemed to have a glow about her. At least I got my own free time, and was able to catch up on sleep and video gaming. Meanwhile, she was having the time of her life. That weekend, I found myself at another pub with Jackson, but this time I felt much more confident in myself and I ended up talking to this girl for the whole night. We ended up hitting it off, and she said that she lived alone, and the plan was to go with her. However, ten minutes later, she was with somebody else. I told my friend that clubbing was not the best place to find someone, and I should probably get an app. I heard they work well nowadays, and I'm just not up for possibly getting catfished. I know I sound like I'm being picky. That was until I met her. Seeing her in a pub was mutually exclusive. At work, she's usually very poised and serious and does not look like she can have any fun at all. But that night, she was all dolled up. And she looked so damn attractive. We had a conversation and I guess you can say one thing led to another. And I ended up waking up at her place. In the moment, it felt good and thrilling. Even when I got home, my wife said that I had a glow and teased me that I must have had a good night. She said that she was relieved that I was finally putting some effort into this. However, as the day wore on, I started to realize the gravity of what I've done. I've slept with a colleague. Not just that, but the most uptight one. How was I going to face my boss on Monday after spending the night with my boss, Victoria? There was no way I was going to be able to look her in the eyes again. She was my boss, for goodness sake. She was probably going to fire me or something, thinking that I just wanted to take advantage, and I did not even know if she was dating, but she knew that I was open. That's how I skipped work on Monday, and that night she sent me a message telling me that she needed to see me first thing tomorrow morning. Well, that day is today, and I got to hear my fate. Was it really worth it? Enough to lose my job? I don't know, but I have so many regrets right now, and I wish I could go back in time and change it all. Update number three. I take what I said back because I don't regret it at all. That night changed a lot of things in my life, and I, if I had not run into Victoria, I would have never realized the passion that was missing in my own marriage. What happened was that when she called me into the office, she wanted me to keep what happened between us a secret. We decided not to speak about it, and we did not for days, but every time I saw her, I could not help but think back to that night. I saw her in a new light, and she was suddenly so attractive to me. She must have felt the same because she wanted me to come to her house on Friday. It was under the guise of wanting some help with work, but when we got there... <laughs> No work was done. Soon, it became a regular thing. My wife and I turned into strangers at home, and she's either away or I am. As soon as I finish work, I get to Victoria's house, and after that, I go back home. We talk for a bit, and then we go to bed. I've noticed that Barry's texting her more now. She seems to see him more as well. I used to care so much in the beginning, but now I cannot wait for her to leave the house. 
At this point, we're glorified roommates. She says that she's going to get her bonus soon and end things with him, but I don't know if I can end things with Victoria yet. I mean, I cannot describe the connection I have with her. It's insane. Well, no matter how, it's not just about being physical. She talks to me. She talks to me about her life, her family, her stresses. She's also surprisingly very funny and generous. This is a side to her that I did not know. She was once married but got divorced two years ago. Since then, she's been single. She knows about the relationship agreement that my wife and I have, and she's okay with it. And soon, my wife says that her agreement with her boss is going to end. She says that she did not plan on keeping this going for this long. She's singing a different tune than a couple months ago. Back then, she said that she was enjoying how open we were. I'm not going to think about it much. I'm just going to enjoy the time that Victoria and I have. As they say... Absence makes the heart grow fond. I'm sure that once we're monogamous again, we'll be back more in love than ever, but I also cannot help but think about the house that we're going to be paying a deposit on. It's been a roller coaster of a year, that's for sure, but I think it'll end on a high note. I guess it's not so bad to be in an open relationship after all. Update number four. We're getting a divorce. We've tried this and it appears that it's not working for us. The funny part is that it's mutual. We've made rules and those rules have been broken. We tried to stop this open marriage thing and found out that we did not even get along anymore. It was strange for me to find out that I did not even find my wife attractive anymore. I started to compare her to Victoria even though I wasn't even seeing Victoria anymore. I think the main thing that led to the breakdown for our relationship was when I found out that she was now seeing somebody else besides her boss. When I asked her if she knew when she was going to get that bonus, she said that she did not care because she was not seeing him anymore. Either way, she had spent the check on getting new clothes for herself and spoiling herself. I have no problem with her spoiling herself. That's not the issue. But I feel that she should have updated me. I mean, in the first place, this was the reason why she wanted to have an open marriage. Or maybe... It was just an excuse so that she could start dating again. Either way, I forgave her for not being honest with me and we continued. She started going on a lot of dates and was rarely ever home. As for me, I still hung out with Victoria. It got to the point where I spent days without being at home because I was with Victoria. So then Emmy had a problem with me and Victoria and she said that she wants to meet her. I agreed for them to meet and it was a disaster. It was clear that they did not like each other and I caught the snide comments and dirty looks and when we got home, she accused me of being in love with Victoria. She also claimed that I've been bringing her to our home, which is not the truth, I know the rules. We don't bring anyone home. So then, that night she made me promise that we would stop being open and would focus on us. We did not even last two weeks, guys. I found nothing appealing about her and she did the same with me. So, then... She came up to me and was honest about what she wanted. She told me that she did not want to be married anymore. She wanted her freedom so that she could be with whomever she pleases with no commitment. She just went ahead to claim to have found liberation and that and wanted to pursue it. I agreed for us to split up and we had a divorce. Luckily, we did not have a house together. Otherwise, that would have complicated things and the last time I spoke to her was after the divorce. To be honest, she looked great and seemed to be doing good, and I've not spoken to her since then because there's nothing much except a broken marriage. Sometimes I wonder what would have happened if I chose to say no to the open marriage. Then I think of Victoria and think that maybe it was not such a bad idea. When I got divorced, I decided to quit my job at her company. I got a good enough recommendation from my manager and I got a job elsewhere. She didn't want to speak to me at all. She felt that I've played her. To be honest, maybe I did. After all, I allowed both of us to break a rule, which was the rule of falling in love. But then, I cannot keep her off my mind. I did not want to go out there and date other people like my ex. I just wanted to have a life partner. Somebody to laugh with and be happy with. Somebody that I could be comfortable with and just discuss life plans. It just turned out to be my cold-hearted boss. My friend Jackson, who had just gotten married, encouraged me to try and get back with her. 
since she was also invited to his wedding, that gave me a chance to talk to her. I'll admit that she gave me a really hard time, but soon we were dating publicly. No one knew about our affair before I quit, and we decided to keep it that way. The fact that I was no longer working there also worked in my favor a lot. For the past couple of months, well, we have been dating and I've made a decision. I believe that we're both ready for this. We've spoken about it and see no reason to wait and we're both trying to hand at this for a second time and I doubt that we will fail. So, I've decided that I wanted to ask her to marry me. First, I asked permission to propose from her father, and he told me that it would be a great idea for me to do it during a family dinner. Their extended family was in town, and it would make everything much more of a special night. So, we booked a restaurant for the night, and then, well, it was time, and I proposed. She was shocked, but also very happy, and then she started jumping up and down, saying, Yes, yes, yes. I could have worn that I cried tears of joy, but my facial expression turned into one of mortification when my ex-wife entered the restaurant holding hands with my fiancé's uncle. That's right. Update number five. Hey guys, to say that it was a shock would be an understatement at what I saw. It appears that she's been dating this uncle, who was significantly rich for a couple of months. I guess that's why I had not heard from her in a while. When she saw who I was proposing to, she gave me a look of pure contempt. Victoria and I quickly covered up the awkwardness and we carried on with dinner. However, it was a very awkward, unpleasant one. How could I tell my in-laws that this was my ex-wife right across from us? It was so awkward. But of course, exes cannot always be friends. The next day after I proposed, my future father-in-law called me and told me that he did not want me to marry his daughter. I asked why. He told me that Emmy had told him everything, and in her version, she claimed that I forced her to get into an open marriage and get money from her boss. He also found out that Victoria used to be my boss and thinks that I want to be with her because of her money, which is not true. He told me that while, uh, well, he would protect his daughter's integrity and not tell the family how we met, he wanted me out of his daughter's life for good. He was dead serious about it, too. He told me that I would bring nothing but unhappiness to her life. And after meeting with him, I tracked down Emmy so that we could talk. She did not even deny that she had told him what happened, let alone lied, and I asked what the problem with her was since we both agreed that we could divorce. She told me that the problem was that I found love and she did not. She told me that she's fallen for her boss, but he refused to leave his life for her. So, she saw other people so that she could get over it. She felt herself losing me every day and did not want to be alone when she did. That dinner with Victoria confirmed to her what she feared, which was that I was in love with Victoria. She tried to stop the open marriage, but in the end we were not happy. She hoped that I would not get back together with Victoria, even claiming that Vicky was not as beautiful and interesting as she was. She did not see what I saw in Vicky. I told her that I was sorry about how things ended, but I wanted her to be happy. I was sorry that the whole thing with her boss backfired, but I also deserved to be happy, you know. I told her that she had Vicky's uncle, who was actually one of the people with a heart of gold. She would be happy. She then said that she only liked him because of what he could do for her, but he was not me. With him, it was a transaction, but with me, it was love, and right then, I had to stop her. I had to let her face the truth that I've known for years. I told her that she's just fearing being alone, and that was why she was so easily jumped from person to person. I could not be with a person whose heart was probably never mine to even begin with. So, she turned pale when she heard me say those words, and she asked if Jackson had told me, and I asked what she meant by that. She then dropped the biggest bombshell of my life and she told me that she had Jackson spend the night together before we got married. It was back in the days when he was a Casanova. Wow, even my best friend is a piece of trash. Update number six. I did not, and I repeat, I did not react very well to the news that my best friend was a backstabbing piece of trash. I made sure that I revealed that at his rehearsal dinner and warned his bride. 
I uninvited myself from the wedding and blocked them everywhere, and then I blocked my ex as well. After that, I went to Victoria and told her what her father had said, and I let her know that I wanted her to be happy all the time, even if it wasn't with me. She was the last person who knew me well, so who was close to me, and there was a chance that I could lose her. I cursed Emmy for making my life hell from the first day that I got married to her. I wish that she had told me that she did these things back then because I would have never married her. Yet here she was feeling betrayed because I asked Vicky to marry me. What a hypocrite. I got my answer just a few days after I told Vicky what her father said. There was nothing anyone could do to change her voice to marry me. She told me that we might have gone through hell together, but it was worth it, and she told her dad, and he respected her choice. I'm going to work very hard to prove to him that I care very deeply for his daughter. Maybe it'll take a couple months, or maybe it'll take forever, but he will gain my trust, I'm telling you. As for Emmy, she dumped Vicky's uncle like a hot potato. <laughs> I have no idea where she is or what she's even doing now. But all I can hope for is that she'll fill that void one day in her heart. I could not do it, but maybe someone else out there will be enough for her. I still hate her for the lies and deceit and ruining my relationship with my in-laws. There was no need for her to mess up my life just because hers was messed up. For now, we focus on the biggest day of my life, the day that I get married to Victoria. I have a very good feeling about this one. It was very unconventional and unplanned, but yet here we are. I look forward to spending the rest of my life with her, and I'm glad that she chose me. I still can't believe how lucky I am that she chose to fight for me. It's a weird love story, but it's our story of me and Victoria. A lot of the commenters of this story were saying how this actually turned out to be a good thing for OP. Saying basically how without this happening and the opening of the marriage, even though OP was initially against it, it led him to realize he's not really in love with his wife like he thought he was, and he's way more into Victoria, and now they're getting married, so a lot of people were saying how it ended out really good for him. Let me know your thoughts on this, your thoughts about the open relationship and how OP went about it, and the reasoning behind it initially was for a raise, so they could get the money to buy a big house, and I don't know, it just felt wrong. But let me know your thoughts about it. My name's Mr. Reddito, and I narrate stories every single day. If you want more daily videos, there's three ways to support the channel, and it's super easy. Subscribe to it with that bell notification icon, drop a comment down below, and also don't forget to hit that like button. Those are the three things that help out the channel a lot. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'll see you tomorrow, and remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.